Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the first episode of a new series I'm going to be starting called How to Buff. The series where we look at every single Rainbow Six Siege operator and we look at how exactly I would go about buffing them. And let's just get this right out of the way. We're going to be starting with what I feel is the weakest defensive operator on offer in Rainbow Six Siege. And that one is Castle. Now you may be wondering to yourself, why exactly do I consider Castle to be the weakest operator on the defensive side? It sounds like a great idea to be able to reinforce a doorway or a window to have it be bulletproof. Well, this leads to the first issue with Castle in that it may be bulletproof, sure, but it sure as hell is not melee proof. For those of you who are unaware, you can knock down a Castle Barricade in 12 melee hits. For reference, that would take roughly 30 seconds or so. And you may be arguing, oh, well, that's 30 seconds that the attacking team doesn't have to make an effective attack. That's if you have a mute jammer on it, and also if they have no other choice but to melee it, ignoring other options such as Ash and Sledge. If you were just left alone to melee it, I would argue that it would take less than 30 seconds. Another primary issue that I have with Castle is the Fuse Charge issue. You can get Fuse Charged through your Castle Barricades, and you will have no chance of stopping it, unless you have Jaeger or Mute. Again, the, you could say this adds to the Rock, Paper, Scissors gameplay of Rainbow Six Siege, and I would agree with you to a point. I agree that there should be some sort of counter that everyone can take actively, not just passively, in order to take down someone else's gadget. So I don't think having an ADS system for a Jaeger Castle Barricade would not be a good option because it takes away an active role the players are taking. Again, that raises the argument of, well, the ADS is technically taking a, pa a active role because you're choosing where to place it. However, I want to be actively able to stop something that is coming through. So fused charges coming through Castle Barricades are another reason as to why he's such a weak operator. Aside from all of this, let's move on to how exactly we'll go about buffing Castle. Scenario 1. We make his barricades immune to being meleeed down. It really is that simple. This would be the quickest and easiest and most effective way of buffing Castle. Castle is so weak right now because literally any operator can destroy his gadget without using one of their own, not even a secondary gadget. You don't need a breaching charge in the status quo in order to knock down a castle barricade. No, all you need is a good old fashioned fist and a prayer and all of a sudden you can knock down this supposedly bulletproof barricade. It adds to the realism because you can't punch down something as a bulletproof as well a bulletproof barricade and it adds to the gameplay balance because it adds to the rock paper scissors gameplay style that rainbow six is so known for we have counters that s exist such as thatcher to jaeger and many other examples such as mute to literally every electronic ever and nowadays bandit to thermite as well as thatcher to bandit and thatcher to mute this adds to the Rainbow Six style of gameplay, and it's frankly shocking as to why it wasn't like this to begin with. Because this would force operators to use their gadgets rather than just punch at it, and it adds to the point of picking an operator. If you know that the enemy team is going to have a castle, but you can't melee it down, you're likely to bring someone such as an Ash or a Sledge, contributing to your team and adding to the overall back and forth that is Rainbow Six Siege. This happens a lot whenever you realize that someone has a mute, you're going to bring a Thatcher or a Twitch next time around. Whenever someone has a Caviera, you're probably going to bring a Jackal or someone to watch your back. And if you notice that the attacking team has a Montang, you're probably going to bring someone who's quick like Pulse who has a Nitro Cell. So this overall knocking about the ability to knock out these barricades with simple 12 melee hits that would make Castle one of the strongest operators in the game. But let's say that doesn't tickle your fancy. Scenario 2. Make every single one of Castle's barricades a Castle Barricade. Now this may be a tad bit ridiculous, but stay with me here. 
With the normal wooden barricades, you can take them down in three hits. It makes sense, right? So why exactly would you give someone only three when you can knock it down to in 12 hits each? You could solve this and it would make castle a much stronger operator because you still have the ability to knock them down without using a gadget. I could see the objections if, well, you take both scenario one and two and the third scenario coming up in a minute, and you combine all three of them, or even just one and two. But if you take one of the situations, in case, in this case, this one, scenario two, you could have an essentially infinite amount of castle barricades that you can place around everywhere. You say that, well, you said earlier that you don't like passive over active, and this seems like a sure passive buff to me. And to that argument, I say, touche. Fair point against me. But this also solves the issue of Castle's gadget is too weak right now because it doesn't require a secondary gadget. When you limit someone, you should give them more to do with something that is weaker. It's like, say, the Vector. The Vector has such a high fire rate, using an example of a gun to a person, the Vector has such a high fire rate, but it has very low damage to compensate for that. Let's say that the Castle Barricades are now the Vector. It makes sense that because they're so weak, not even requiring a secondary gadget to break down, that you should have a lot of them. Now you could argue again, well, you're taking it too much of an extreme. An infinite amount of Castle Barricades would break the balance. Well, it's clearly not balanced right now, and the 12 melee hits prove this. Because literally any operator, and this is my main problem with Castle, any operator can take it down with little to no effort and not using their own gadget. And, well, say that those two scenarios didn't suit you either. Let's move on to the third one. The third and final scenario, and arguably the most interesting, is allow Castle to place his barricades behind or in front of normal ones. Now you may be saying, well, what's the point of that? Surprise is the point of that. Imagine you have this one wooden barricade. You think, oh, it's just a normal wooden barricade. Then all of a sudden you turn it around and, oh wait, there's a castle barricade behind that. And this bounces back to one of my other issues. The way I would balance it is if you put a castle barricade, limiting it back to three, and you had a fuse charge. The fuse charge would essentially get confused and just negate itself in the window. It would still destroy the castle barricade, but it would not get inside, thus solving my main issue with fuse being such a ridiculous counter to castle. And that's pretty much the entire scenario. Well, I guess I'll finish this up with some general notes. For all of these scenarios, I'm proposing another massive buff to Castle. Remove his teammate's excessive time in order to knock down one of his barricades. We've had and seen those situations where, oh, it's secure area, and there's one person left, and they just have to knock down this barricade, only to realize it's a Castle barricade, and it takes them four and a half years to knock it down. Remove this, and you'll have a much better Castle. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed the three scenarios, and be sure to tell me in the comments which one you enjoyed the most, and let me know which operator I should do this for next. Now, this is your friendly neighborhood, Ace Man Austin 0 here, signing off.